Whether you're looking for manufactured or natural stone to accent or update your exterior or interior project of any size, Centurion Stone of Iowa offers a variety of styles, patterns, and colors for every need. Centurion Stone, our own manufactured stone product, has the look and feel of natural stone and is available in over 200 color and pattern combinations. We also provide natural stone for interior and exterior projects. Our Des Moines and Omaha locations are open daily. Browse our wide variety of product samples with our helpful staff. They'll answer any questions that you have. Check us out on the web at centurionstoneofiowa.com. Hello, friends. Welcome to Post Game Podcast here on Cyclone Fanatic, Cyclone Fanatic social media feeds. Of course, the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network brought to you today, as always, by our friends at Carl Auto Group and Centurion Stone of Iowa. Let's get after it as Iowa State beats Cincinnati 30 to 10 on the road. Really in, in dominant form. It looked I, I thought after the first two possessions that Iowa State was going to kind of blow this team out. And I, I, I actually think the scoreboard was even closer than this game was, believe it or not. Uh, we will we'll get to everything. I just I want to start with a big picture thing for you guys, and then we'll get into the stats and, and all that. So the, I'm assuming many of you watching and listening consume a lot of our content at Cyclone Fanatic and even Iowa Everywhere for that. And I, I've been trying to make the point for a while, and I think it kind of showed today to to my point that like I think that Texas and Oklahoma are kind of at a different level. This is why I'm very optimistic about Iowa State's future in this new Big 12. Now, Cincinnati will get better. This is their first year with the new head coach. This is their first year in a new conference. But these rosters are similar. And this is the first time in um, the history of Iowa State football where you're not consistently playing against teams that are more talented than you. And I think it showed today. I mean, Iowa State's out there doing that with freshmen playing all over the field. So, that, again, that's where I wanted to start today. And we're going to see more in the next couple weeks. And it's not just the new teams. But you, you go through the rest of the league, all the teams that are returning – there's not a team on there where in the past you're like, oh, you have no chance to win other than a few of the leech years with Tech. Oklahoma State was hot there for a while, but you could still jump up and beat them every once in a while. I just I think this sets up really well. If Matt Campbell's the head coach in Iowa State, I think it's a top four job in this league, and I'm, I'm fired up. That was an absolute ass-kicking. So shout out to – all of you who stuck through a couple of tough weeks early on and want to talk about today's win, uh, just the overall improvement as well with this team, you guys are welcome to uh, leave your comments if you're watching on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook, and I will get to as many as I can. Um, well, I'm going to start with the defense, to be honest, and then we'll get into a great game by Iowa State's offense too, but... You know, the Iowa State's defense was looking a little bit shaky there, right, for a couple weeks where I even thought in the first half, and I, I pondered this aloud, and, and gosh darn it, I was wrong, but I'll take it. Like I said, I don't know if there's a button that John Haycock can push to fix this. Well, he did something because uh, this group is playing really good football. That was the best game of the year by the linebackers. I will go on the record right now and say that without even – Going back on the tape, Bacon, Vaughn, McLaughlin combined today for 19 tackles. Woo! <laughs> big time. That's a big stat right there because they hadn't been doing that. Uh, Frailer comes up and Freeler comes up and gets nine to lead Iowa State. But I, I there's a lot to like. Um, 
Ike, 88. God, I'm going to butcher his last name. He comes out and gets his uh, half sack. Zach Lovett, uh, that's the third game in a row that he sacked the quarterback. Ooh. Tackling much, much better. I'd say that they probably had fewer single digits and in, in missed tackles today. So that's where I wanted to start was the defense and the special teams. And we'll get to that now. Uh, the brilliant fake field goal by Matt Campbell uh, that he called in the first half. A couple of big kick returns by Jalen Knoll. The punter was great. The kicker was great. <laughs> special teams you, baby. Um, let's get to the offense real quick. I'm checking out a couple of uh, questions on injuries. Derek wanted to know, is there any word on Jeremiah Cooper? He came back into the game, so assuming he's fine. Um, Vernon wants to know about Abu Sama. I didn't think he had played either, but he is in the partici- on the participation chart. So I, he apparently was out there. Now, if you remember correctly, in the fourth quarter of the TCU game, he went out of the game. Uh, he got dinged up, and I, I just wonder if they were being cautious with him today. The good thing is they've got some pretty good depth at running back. I think Carson Hansen's going to be a freaking stud too. So you really didn't miss him all that much, and now he's got a bye week. I don't think it's anything serious. So should have Sama back for the Baylor game in a couple of weeks. Um, offensively, you know, the biggest thing I like today, and I'm going to get to Jaden Higgins in a minute, but it was creativity with Rocco Beck, right? Like, you can tell you can tell how much Nate Shieldhouse and Matt Campbell trust Rocco Beck with the options that they're giving him, and now they have him moving around in the running game, too. They have him, even in the passing game, throwing on the run. Uh, they're putting a lot on a rookie quarterback there, and he did a really good job at decision making. Right? He's not incredibly accurate. He's pretty accurate. Um, he's his accuracy numbers have dropped, but he's taken more chances too, and and that has a lot to do with it. I have no complaints on Rocco Beck. That's a really clean quarterback. Iowa State has there. Jaden Higgins. We sold you all summer that this was the next great Iowa State wide receiver. And many people were starting to question me um, over the last couple of weeks. Six receptions, 172 yards today. uh, 72 yards after the catch, targeted nine times. A lot of applause. I mean, that's a big-time game. Him and Rocco had that one in the fourth quarter, the long. It's like a 13-yard out. Oh, that was a thing of beauty. Um. I thought Jalen Knoll played a massive game with those two big kick returns. Jeff Woody on Football and Random Things likes to talk about hidden yards. A lot of them. Iowa State won the hidden yards today. What's that? Steve O'Klotz, second week with a huge reception for that young man. Shout out to him. Uh, a lot of really positive things today. And, the, and that's the second game in a row where Iowa State, we use the we overuse the term complimentary football. And... Um, but that, that's the second one in a row where Iowa State's really dominated in, in three aspects of the football game. So, big time, big time. All right, let's go through some of your comments. I will do my best to peel through as many of these as I can. Um, Scott wants to know, is the red zone an issue? Too many threes, not enough sevens. I think that's fair, but I also think that you're playing to the game and, like, why – you know, early on I felt that, but in the third, fourth quarter, like why risk it, right? You're you're kind of playing conservative, running some clock. I understand what you're saying. Like if you're playing Oklahoma, you don't want to be settling for threes, but they won by twenty, so I'm not gonna get too bent out of shape with that. Um Elliot says they're unleashing Rocco similar to what they did with Purdy. It is similar to Purdy, and I felt bad saying that the last couple of weeks because it's just unrealistic expectations for a young man. But they're using him just like him. And Rocco, like when you watch him play, it's a very similar, except I would actually give Rocco the compliment that he doesn't do a lot of the stupid stuff that Brock did, right? 
<laughs> but that was why we love Brock because he'd. And I do think though, like Rocco's uh, efficiency numbers are dropping a little bit, but that's because he's being more aggressive with it, and and that's paying off. Uh, Nick says, "Young team is growing up before our eyes each week. Glad to see it. Another good game by the Cyclones." They are, and I give Matt Campbell and his staff a ton of credit too, because it's just we live in this world where these coaches are so stubborn. They think they know everything. It's really hard for them to get out of their like what they're used to. And this this staff has turned this offense around night and day, night and day. And I give them so much credit for that. With and 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 credit the players too for you know for adjusting. Um, but I think what Matt did, and this is what I, after the Ohio game, go back and listen to my post game. I mean, this is what I kind of thought they'd do. When you go and lose a game like that, you, you got to look yourself in the mirror and you got to make some changes. And that's exactly what they did. They didn't keep pounding their head against the wall. And that, that's hard for guys at this level. We've all seen it. Like you guys have all watched Iowa state football forever. It's a lot of, it's hard for for these coaches to look at what's going on in Iowa city, right? Like it's, it's difficult and, and they did it and it's been a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Justin points out Rocco is four and and not committing any turnovers, clean football. Bryce, my man, Bryce pointing out my man, Malik Verdon been telling you guys, he is the MVP of the defense. He is the MVP. He is the most valuable member of Iowa State's defense because without him, you can't stop the run. You just can't. Like, you need that safety to come up and stop the run. Uh, ben Nichols, okay in coverage, but he's not the run stopper that Malik Verdone is. Malik Verdone, you're right, Bryce, changed the defense today. He, him and Cooper are almost too aggressive, which sounds crazy. They play so reckless, it's why they get hurt all the time. And they both got dinged up today. But, um, yeah, Nate, all right, you're right, Nate. Hold on. Nate says it's Cody Road time, baby. This is the brand new one. Look at that bottle. Ain't she beautiful? Woo-wee! Look at that bottle. I don't even like gold, and that is badass. Shout out to my friend Ryan Burchett at Mississippi River Distilling Company for that butte. All right. I am going to get this posted, and then I've got to go- jump on Cyclone Reaction with Learfield. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. It's kind of a rainy, soggy day here in Iowa, so it's kind of fun to be able to just sit in. And when you play the 11 o'clock game and you win, it's freaking awesome. When you play the 11 o'clock game and you lose, the day really sucks, right? Y'all can have a lot of fun. Go pop some of that Ames Lager, some of your uh, Cody Road, my friends. And uh, Chad wants to know, where can you get this bottle of Cody Road? Any liquor store. Uh, Hy-Vee's Fairways should have it. This is the one that they're shipping out right now. And if they don't, you can request it. So just go up to the liquor cabinet or whatever and request this bottle of Cody, Cody Road. Say you want the Cyclone Fanatic Gold one, and they should be able to get it in for you. I have all of the ones we've done. We've got four of them now, and it's really cool to kind of collect them. And I always give Bloom and all the collective guys crap because it's, we were the first ones to start doing this. Not you all. We were. We appreciate you all for buying it, and it's been a lot of fun to watch it grow over the years. Last comment on the game, and Brett, you're exactly right. I tweeted this middle of the third quarter. that I tweeted that Zach Lovett is low-key MVP of the defense the last couple of weeks. When you got these running quarterbacks, he's – He's got that athleticism there at linebacker to really play the spy, and he, he's been really, really impressive. What does he have? Three sacks now, I think, in three weeks. Incredible for the Missouri transfer. All right, we got a lot of football. We can start scoreboard watching now. Cyclones are 3-1 and one of the Big 12. Bay Bay! Bye week. I wish it wasn't a bye week. We don't want a bye week right now. Come on. All right. Uh, love you all. Appreciate your time. Uh, please rate, subscribe, review everything we do podcast-wise. We appreciate it. Centurion Stone of Iowa, we appreciate Carl Auto Group for sponsoring everything we do here on Cyclone Fanatic. My name is Chris Williams. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon, my friends.